do something you're very passionate about and don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. I think we actually saw this, I think you see it all over the place in many different contexts, but I think we saw it uh, in the internet world quite a bit where you know, at the sort of peak of the uh, sort of internet, uh, you know, mania in say 1999, you found people who were, uh, you know, very passionate. So I mean, they kind of left that job and decided I'm going to, you know, do something in the internet because it's, you know, it was almost like the, you know, the 1849 gold rush in a way. I mean, you find that people, uh, if you go back and study the history of the 1849 gold rush, you find that, you know. Uh, at that time, everybody who was in with, within the shouting distance of California was, you know, they might have been a doctor, but they quit being a doctor and they started panning for gold. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that almost never works. Um, and even if it does work, uh, you know, according to some metric, financial success or whatever it might be, I suspect it leaves you ultimately unsatisfied. So you really need to be very clear with yourself and I think one of the best ways to do that is this notion of projecting yourself forward to age 80 looking back on your life and trying to make sure you've minimized the number of regrets you have that works for that works for career decisions it works for family decisions um, you know do you want I, I have a, a 14 month old son and it's very easy for me to if I think about myself when I'm 80 I know I want to watch that little guy grow up um, and so it, it's, I don't want to be 80 and think, shoot, you know, I, I missed that whole thing and I don't have the kind of relationship with my son that I wished I had and so on and so on. So if you think about that, so I, I guess another thing that I would recommend to people is that they always take a long-term point of view. And I think this is something about which there's a lot of uh, controversy. You know, there's a, uh, there's a, you know, some, a lot of people, and I'm just not one of them, believe that you should live for the now. I think what you do is you think about the, 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 the great expanse of time ahead of you and try to make sure that you're planning for that in a way that's going to leave you ultimately satisfied. Um, so this is just my, this is the way it works for me. And I mean, this is, everybody needs to find that for themselves. Um, uh, so I think there are a lot of paths to satisfaction and you need to find one that works, works for you. You guys will find that you have passions and having a passion is a gift. I think we all have passions and you don't get to uh, choose them, they pick you, but you have to be alert to them. You have to be looking for them. And when you find your passion, it's a fantastic gift for you because it gives you direction, it gives you purpose. Uh, you can have a job or you can have a career or you can have a calling. And the best thing is to have a calling. And if you find your passion, you'll have that and all your work won't feel like work to you. Make sure that you are focused on something you're passionate about. So what is the role of risk in life? It's hard to do anything, I think, what, whatever it is that you want to do, you're, there's going to be risk in your life. And risk is a necessary component of progress. What I want to talk to you about today is the difference between gifts and choices. Cleverness is a gift. Kindness is a choice. Gifts are easy. They're given after all. Choices can be hard. You can seduce yourself with your gifts if you're not careful. And if you do, it'll probably be to the detriment of your choices. This is a group with many gifts. I'm sure one of your gifts is the gift of a smart and capable brain. Your smarts will come in handy because you will travel in a land of marvels. We humans, plodding as we are, will astonish ourselves. We'll invent ways to generate clean energy and a lot of it. Atom by atom, we'll assemble small machines that can enter cell walls and make repairs. This month comes the extraordinary but inevitable news that we've synthesized life. In the coming years, we'll not only synthesize it, but engineer it to specifications. I believe you'll even see us understand the human brain. Jules Verne, Mark Twain, Galileo, Newton, all the curious from the ages, 
would have wanted to be alive, most of all, right now. As a civilization, we will have so many gifts, just as you as individuals have so many individual gifts as you sit before me. How will you use these gifts? And will you take pride in your gifts or pride in your choices? How will you use your gifts? What choices will you make? Will inertia be your guide or will you follow your passions? Will you follow dogma or will you be original? Will you choose a life of ease or a life of service and adventure? Will you wilt under criticism or will you follow your convictions? Will you bluff it out when you're wrong or will you apologize? Will you guard your heart against rejection or will you act when you fall in love? Will you play it safe or will you be a little bit swashbuckling? When it's tough, will you give up or will you be relentless? Will you be a cynic or will you be a builder? Will you be clever at the expense of others or will you be kind? I will hazard a prediction. When you are 80 years old, and in a quiet moment of reflection, narrating for only yourself the most personal version of your life story, the telling that will be most compact and meaningful will be the series of choices you have made. In the end, we are our choices. Build yourself a great story.